I tested about 250 different GPTs this week. I got a couple hundred more to go through and I put together a list of the top 10 so far that I think you'll find really useful. And in the process of my testing, I actually put together a massive data set of the top GPTs that I'm constantly updating. And I'm using this to train my own GPT. I'll show you that in a bit. It's gonna make it really easy for you to find links directly to some GPTs that are useful. So this one is called Prompty. And basically Prompty is your personal prompt engineer. So it's trained on data on creating good prompts. So it's trained on things like chain of thought prompting or one shot or few shot prompting. And it's gonna give you basically a better version of any type of prompt that you wanna give ChatGPT. Prompt engineering is a big deal to get better results out of ChatGPT. So this should be a very useful one. So here I asked it, what's a good prompt for writing an SEO blog? And he basically gave me a big picture overview, but more importantly, it created the prompt for me. So it says write a detail, engage SEO optimized blog post about, and you could see it's a much larger prompt than the one I gave up here, right? So this is a great way to copy this now and then open up a chat GPT conversation, or you could do it inside of here too, and basically fill in these red sections with your very specific use case and then get a much better results out of chat GPT. So this is the one I wanted to start with. I think you'll find this one really useful. Now, next on the list is gonna require a little bit of integration, but it's gonna turn your chat GPT into a personal assistant. Basically, you could link with calendar GPT, your personal calendar or your work calendar to chat GPT. And when you do that, you could ask a question like, what's my day look like? So right now, if you go to this right here, and if you try to use it, it's gonna ask you to use Zapier to connect to your calendar. And it says sign in with a Zapier action. So I already created a video showing you exactly how to use these Zapier actions. It's a little bit more advanced, but I think you'll find it useful if you could create a Zapier account, which is an automation tool, connect your calendar to this calendar GPT, and then ask it basically to help you with your day planning. Next on the list, we have Canva. Now this is the one that OpenAI showed as a demo when they released GPTs. Now this one, again, helps you create presentation, logo, social media post. And this one, if you come over here and you go to the privacy setting, I think this is built by the ChatGPT plugin Canva. So it looks like the official one and the privacy policy takes you to the Canva page here. Now for this Instagram post, it's asking me what I like to include. So I'm gonna ask it to quote, seize the day to see that, is this just pulling templates here from Canva that it's gonna link to? or is it actually gonna create something that has what I want? So I specifically put text here to see if that's gonna incorporate that into my design. Now it says, do you wanna trust chatgptplugin.canva.com? I'm gonna say allow. And while that's working, I should mention right now, because there is no official GPT store, just be careful and don't put any personal information into any GPTs because anybody could create them and anybody could share them with a private link. So make sure you keep your personal information very secure from these GPTs. Okay, and it gave me this, which doesn't look very good at all, but it did actually include my text. Seize the days right here. Terrible placement, but you could see where this could go. It's not quite there yet. In fact, it's not there at all, but this Canva plugin is gonna turn into this Canva GPT and hopefully it rolls out to the GPT store, which I'm sure it would be part of it because this is what they used in their demo and it will be huge when it comes to graphic design if this works properly. Right now I'm just using Dolly 3 to create type of graphics, but this Canva could be a very useful option. And when you click it, it does redirect you here to canva.com. So again, not quite there yet, but I wanted to point it out because it will be one of the leading GPTs in the GPT store soon. Okay, next on the list, we have this babyagi.txt, and this is basically a task manager that saves any conversation you have with ChatGPT into a text file. So the really cool thing about this is I could create a to-do list to help me plan my day, for example, and then I could ask it to give me a text document that I could download, right? So it's not just inside of ChatGPT. Now it does this with a combination. If I go over here to the about section, it's gonna do that with a combination of the advanced data analysis that will be allowed to create some kind of a text document. So again, this is possible using the regular ChatGPT, but this is just dedicated to that version. Now this next one is being really useful. This one is called Tech Support Advisor and it's one of them that ChatGPT actually rolled out. They created about 16 of these GPTs when they introduced it. So if you go to the Explore tab on your GPTs, you'll see all these different GPTs here 
that they have about 16 of them right now. And this one's trained on a lot of tech support. So turning a Google Doc into a PDF, for example, I could just click this and get a step-by-step -step guide. And I tested this out versus the regular ChatGPT and the tech advisor actually had better answers from the three or four different prompts that I gave it versus the regular ChatGPT. So I'm assuming this has more up-to-date and more relevant tech support questions. So if you're trying to do anything like setting up a printer, this might be better to use than the regular ChatGPT. Now here's a fun one. This one's called Simpsonize Me. And this one right now is the number one trending GPT. So you could upload a photo to it and it's gonna turn it into a Simpson style character. And this one I tried on my mobile app on the ChatGPT app. So I uploaded a picture of Andrew here in the studio and he did a pretty good job. He even got the microphone. But when I uploaded a picture of myself, I did not get a good result. It just put Homer over here, but it didn't do a good job at all with me. So give it a try in the few tests that I've done. Half the time it does a really good job. Half the time you get something that looks like this. Now this one's not on the list, but the same person that made Simpsonize actually made this one and Escape the Haunt. It's really interesting. You basically is a clue game or kind of escape room game that you could do with text and it generates these images giving you different clues and you have to solve a puzzle. So again, another fun one that I was actually playing for quite a while. Now this one's pretty cool. This is called Logo GPT and it turns sketches into logos, which is really, really useful. Here, I'll do a quick sketch in Photoshop. Let's say here's a triangle and then I'm gonna put S and let's put L and then let me go ahead and take a screenshot and let me go ahead and upload that screenshot and I'm gonna tell it to create a minimalistic logo here based on this sketch. Let's see what it comes up with. Oh wow, that's actually pretty good. I didn't even answer any of his follow-up question. I just kept saying, you choose, you choose. He asked me a couple of questions like background colors and he definitely got the initials right. He got the triangle right and he turned it into a minimalistic logo. Now I could say turn it into elegant logo and get a bunch of different variations of the logo just from that sketch that took me just a few seconds to create. Now this one I really like because I use ChatGPT to draft a lot of emails, right? Sales copy, customer service. This one is called Email GPT and this one is specifically an expert in customer service email. And it has a couple of different options like draft a response to a complaint. You could just click that. Now again, ChatGPT could do this, but remember these GPTs are very narrowly focused. So they're probably trained on a set of data that is gonna give you results that is much more in line than what you're looking for because of that narrow data set. Now this next one is called GPT Finder. This is your friendly guide for finding the best GPTs. This is the one I mentioned in the beginning. And this one I think you'll find really useful. Basically, I gave it all the GPTs that we added to our list and we're updating that every day. So if I go to edit GPT, basically the custom set of knowledge is our set of GPTs that are handpicked. Now this is a great way for building GPTs because it's only data we have. It's a hand selected set of data, right? Between me and my team and we update it every day. So it's gonna be the most fresh version of a GPT finder that could exist. And I broke it up into categories to make it easier for a specific use case. So you could search by individual names of GPTs to see if we have them on the list, or you could just see things for creative writing, for example, or business, or if you're doing this for coding, and when I give this GPT a set of instructions, I made sure that every time that it gives you a recommendation, it picks it directly from the list and that it creates a link that you could just click to go directly to that GPT. And in the description, I also put a link to a top 10 list. So you could actually go, if you don't wanna use the GPT finder, you could just click on the ones that I mentioned throughout this video to test it out for yourself. And if you haven't watched it already, I recommend watching the GPT automation video that uses Zapier to connect to a ton of different apps to automate email sending and connecting to calendars and things like that. So I'll link that below as well. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.